Okay, this is the uh, notes for section 3.8, formulas for linear arithmetic sequences. We spent a lot of time in chapter 3 with sequences, and we've really kind of touched upon this idea, but we haven't really fully stated it, and that is what an arithmetic sequence is. We've looked at a lot of different ones of these, but we, we're going we're gonna to explicitly, or, or actually state what what that means so it says so when we say an arithmetic sequence what we're saying is a sequence with a constant difference between terms this is a linear function with a domain of a sequence okay so anytime you have a starting value and a constant difference between terms it's it's going to be linear while well, sequences can be linear Okay, it's just that it's going to be it's going to be a discrete domain as opposed to a continuous domain. So let's take a look at example one, uh, which is going to help us in de developing an explicit formula for arithmetic sequences. It says write an explicit formula for the arithmetic sequence six, ten, fourteen, eighteen, twenty-two, and find the twenty-fifth term of that sequence. Well. If my first term is 6, and I have a constant difference between each of these terms of 4, that, that constant difference, that represents the slope of our line. So my constant difference of 4 is going to be the slope. So if I take 4 times n, um, then I have to figure out, well, what, what do I have to add to that to get my first term? Well, if I take 4 times n, I'd have to add another 2 to it to get to 6. So explicitly, I can write that as 4n plus 2. Okay. Now, if I want to find the 25th term, I can take and replace n with 25. Notice how I have it here in my, in my sub number, 25. And then I'm plugging it in for n here as well. So 4 times 25 plus 2, or 102, would be the value of the 25th term. So to come up with an explicit formula, there's really two things I need to know. I need to know what is my first term, and I need to know what my constant difference is. And if I know those two things, I can use this idea right here for the explicit formula of an arithmetic sequence. I'm going to take the first term, a sub 1, plus n minus 1 times d. So really, all I need to do is plug in what a sub 1 is and what d is, and then I want to put my answer usually in slope-intercept form. So I'd have to expand this out, okay? And then I would um, combine like terms where possible, okay? So that's how we f come up with the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. <laughs> We can also write arithmetic sequences um, using or writing them with a recursive def definition or a recursive formula. And the way that we can do that is very similar. I only need to know two pieces of information. What is the first term and what is the constant difference? Okay? So I'm going to put the first term, I'm going to make a statement about the first term, a sub 1 equals and then whatever that would be. And then I'm also going to make a statement of a sub n, and that's going to be equal to the previous term plus whatever the difference is for all the integers greater than or equal to 2. So I need to state what the first term is, and then the previous or the next term is based on the previous term plus the difference. Okay, so that leads to a recursive definition for that formula, or for that uh, sequence, excuse me. <laughs> So let's take a look at example two here. It says an electronic bulletin board charges two dollars for each word of a classified ad plus fourteen dollars service charge. Okay. Well if I'm going to write this recursively, which is what part A is asking me to do, uh, what I want to do is I want to find two things. I want to find out what's my starting value, and I want to find out what is my constant difference between terms. Okay. Well, if each word costs two dollars more, that means that for each value of n, each term, each time it changes, it's going to be $2 more. So that $2, that represents 
my constant change, my difference. Okay. Now, it also says that there's a $14 service charge. Now, we've got to be careful because that that's not that, that's not your first term. Your first term is after one word. So after one word, we're going to have the $14 plus the $2 to get a total of $16 for the first word. So when we when we do that one, when I when I write that recursively, my first term is going to be 16. And then each additional term is going to be the previous term plus 2. So if I want to find it after two words, okay, then it's going to be the value for one word plus another two dollars or eighteen dollars. Okay? Now, if I want to graph that sequence, I can do that fairly easily just by laying out my graph. Okay, so I I just went here one one through ten. And you you, you don't you know how how you lay this out is, is kind of up to you. Going up by, by tens here, you'll notice that um, I'm just graphing those points, and you'll notice that they, they, they fall on a line. It's just that it's a discrete domain instead of a continuous domain. Okay, so let's take a look at number three now. It says a person owes $8,760 on an interest-free loan and is uh, paying $182.50 each month. Let B sub N be the amount owed after n months. Write a recursive formula for this sequence. Okay. Well, once again, recursively, I want to first find out, hey, what's the first term? Well, the first term is not going to be $8,760. The first term is going to be the amount after one month of payment. So it'd be $8,760 minus the $182.50. So when I write that value explicitly, or excuse me, recursively, um, you'll notice that I have my first term of $8,577.50. And then each additional term is going to be the previous term, B sub n minus 1, minus $182.50. Okay? Now, if I write that explicitly, once again, I only need two numbers. I need to know, hey, what is that first value? And then I need to know that constant difference. And once I have that, I can write a formula for it. And then I can go ahead and use algebra to put that into slope-intercept form. Okay, so if I distribute my 182.50 to n minus 1, okay, and then I combine my like terms, I'd have a negative 182.50 times n plus that original amount of 8760. So notice how this 8760, it really represents the value after zero months. Okay? So that would be our y intercept.